So uh, next, we're going to talk about cooperative extension. And the cooperative extension service has been around for 100 years? Uh, 100 plus years as a way through our land grant universities, Virginia Tech, Virginia State, as a way to work with producers to help them. I'm not going to steal your thunder, but research, 4-H, all kinds of things that are available to help. But they really are the boots on the ground in our communities to help work with our producers. So I wanted to include cooperative extension on this presentation today just to give you another level of, of um, support and information out there. Dr. Janine Woods is a rock star. She's awesome. Thank you so much for her great hospitality, not only in this presentation, but just in helping us to put all this together today. Uh, her official title is the Associate Extension Administrator for Cooperative Extension here at VSU. So Dr. Woods, give her a great big hand. Thank you so much. I'm not going to take too much time, um, so we're going to move pretty fast, but thank you, um, Josie. All right, so uh, Virginia Cooperative Extension is actually um, one system across two universities. If you're coming from another state, um, you might only have one cooperative extension system with the land grant, or if you're coming from one of the southern states, there will be two different um, land grant universities that offer cooperative extension and sometimes they work together and sometimes they don't. In the state of Virginia, we truly believe in one system across the two universities. And so um, if you're visiting a county office, you are visiting both Virginia Tech and Virginia State University by going to that county office. Um, the one cool thing about our system is that administration meets uh, at least once a week during COVID. We were meeting twice a week because <laughs> it was a lot to talk about apparently during COVID. Um, but it allows for us to, to offer our services throughout the state um, and give you great customer service in the process. So with that, I'm going to talk about what we do specifically at Virginia State University. So on campus, we have campus-based staff, which are specialists, associates, and program assistants. Bless you. Um, we have our Small Farms Outreach Program, which Mr. Hilliard will go into a little bit more detail um, about that particular program. Uh, some of you are actually a part of some of their programming already. Um, we do controlled environmental ag, both indoor um, uh, hydroponic and aquaponic units. We do urban agriculture. We have small remnant enterprises. If anyone has ever seen our mobile processing unit, um, either at State Fair or one of our other events, major events, um, that certification program allows producers uh, to take the certification course. And I'm not going to tell you how many weeks it is because sometimes I mix the numbers up. Um, but it is a certification course that is approved. Um, by VDAX um, here in the state, and so the secretary actually signs those, uh, I mean, excuse me, the commissioner signs uh, those certificates um, of the participants that graduate from that program, and then they're able to rent the unit and process their small ruminants on their farm. Um, and so that's one of our certification courses. Our urban ag program also has a certification course as well. Um, I just saw one of our students out in the hallway earlier. Um, that class is eight or nine weeks long. It's here um, on Randolph Farm. They do uh, some lab work out on the farm and then they, there's some uh, community service hours to give back to the program before you can graduate. But that's also a certification program as well. We do specialty crops, both small fruits and vegetable production. Aquaculture, where we focus on fish health um, and pond management. We do school and community gardens, and we also do urban forestry. And so that's kind of the larger programs. We've got some smaller programs in between. Um, and then for a more uh, technical to your farm, that's through our Small Farms Outreach Program. And I think it's important to understand what else we offer because even though this is going to be from an ag production um, audience here, I think it's important for you to know what else we offer as Cooperative Extension. And so here we do 4-H STEM programs. So if you have some youth that are interested in some 4-H STEM programming, we have that here. We also have 4-H leadership and civic engagement, community health and well-being, which includes our vaccine education program, which is nationally recognized. Um, and then family nutrition education and community leadership and advocacy. It's important to understand that, um, you know, even though we're going to be 
predominantly ag production based. We also cover, you know, the, this other side as well. Um, and it's important for our community members to know that. In addition to these kind of main programs, we have uh, our farm field day every year. Sometimes we do an Ag Fest. Um, right now we're doing two Ag Fests a year. So you can come and visit us on campus. Uh, earlier this year, we had a huge block party on campus. Um, this past fall, we, we did farmer's markets on campus and that's open to the community as well. Um, so we find ways to support our community in uh, non-traditional ways as well. Um, and with that, I'm gonna stop talking to see if anybody has any kind of general questions for extension. Hmm? Oh, next field day will be sometime this summer. Um, we've done them different ways um, over the last couple of years. We've done kind of um, just a farmer field day. We've done a college of ag field day. So each year we're kind of changing things up so that you don't get the, the same old, same old every time you come. Um, and so I want to say maybe June. Um, right now we're kind of looking at the early portion of June maybe towards the end of June. It's kind of what we're shooting for right now. Um, we're in the planning stages right now for that one. But that, that covers everything across the farm um, and also covers what some of our researchers are doing as well, which um, if anyone has ever been to our field days, we've got a couple of new strains of edamame that have been patented by our research staff here. Um, and we've been covering some other crops as well with some patent, patent um, varieties. So. Uh, it's an opportunity to see both from the extension demonstration side, but also from our ag research side, what would be relative to you all mm -hmm, and relevant. Good question. Yeah, yes. Um, that you'd have to go to our website. Dr. O'Brien is responsible for that program. Um, but if you, you see your small farms person, they can get you that information because um, there's actually a wait list for that class right now. Yeah, that, that class is packed. Um, and she can only give it to a certain number of students uh, every time she offers it because the, the mobile unit itself is kind of small. Mm -hmm, but great question, yes. Uh, depends on the program, but yes, most of, if, you, if you just um, register for our subscribe, option and then when programs and stuff become available they email it out to everybody that's on the listserv that has opted into those programs mm -hmm. good question any other ones yep mm -hmm. if uh, there's a research idea percolating somewhere, okay why mr. Brown I reach out to you? um I would say email me I'm probably your best bet. Um, I'm busy, but I will eventually respond. <laughs> um, and if you email me, kind of give me your ideas and stuff, we'll figure out a way to see if we can make it work. We do do on-farm trials, um, both with extension and research faculty. Um, we've been modifying what that kind of looks like and kind of how we can support. Our horticulture specialist is also our Southern SARE coordinator. So if anyone has ever gotten a SARE grant um, from a producer, you're interested in a, a sustainable ag grant, you know, our SARE coordinator, Dr. Gu, would be the one to communicate with on that one. But uh, we support our producers in a number of a variety of ways, <laughs> um, including sometimes state fair tickets. So <laughs> we we do, you know, um, sometimes we we get extra things and we try to support any way we can. So, good. yep. Any plans to include fleet scopes in your small amount? No. Um, and the reason why we don't do flea scopes is because Dr. O'Brien uh, has an award-winning hair sheet program um, and our hair sheet program, um, she actually has an accelerated lambing and kidding program that's a part of that and that she's getting three cycles in, whereas most people are only getting two. Um, and so what we have found is that the for meat production, that is where all the money is really right now. And so she's investing all of her research and time um, on that side of the house. Doesn't mean we couldn't do it potentially in the future or potentially have a on-farm trial uh, with a producer, but um, she can definitely support you kind of from that standpoint. But as far as what we have on campus, on the east side of the farm, she only has hair sheep right now. I would volunteer. Okay. 
shoot me an email and I'll make sure Dr. O'Brien gets in contact. Any other questions? I like it. This is fun. <laughs> All right. Well, if you need anything, I'm here. Um, if anyone wants to write down my email address, it is uh, J as in Jack, P as in Paul, Woods, W-O-O-D-S, at V-S-U dot E-D-U. That is J P Woods W O O D S at V S U dot E D U. And if I don't respond in a couple of days, just resend resend the email back. It's not that I'm ignoring you. I travel a lot. Uh, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Um, I'm grateful to be here today, but um, I'm hardly ever here. <laughs> and so um, it will take me a couple of days, but I will respond. Okay? Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Lots of great information. And all of these PowerPoint presentations will include a link to so you can have access to those after the event. But thanks, Dr. Woods, for the good work that you're doing.